In lecture 15, we began our official study of trigonometric identities. We reviewed uh, the fundamental identities we've seen previously in the lecture series, and we've used them to simplify both trigonometric and algebraic expressions. So what our goal is, and one of the big goals of, of chapter six here, is for us to learn how to prove our own trigonometric identities. And so this, this often is intimidating for, for many trigonometry students. And I mean, it's an unfortunate thing because trig trigonometric identities are our friends, they're our tools. Basically what we're saying is every trigonometric identity is a tool we can add to our toolbox. So we, do we want a toolbox that only has like a hammer and a screwdriver? Or do we want a hammer, a screwdriver, a ratchet, some wrenches, a saw, uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, there's so many tools. You go to, go to a store like Home Depot or Lowe's and just go down the hardware area you can see all these tools it's like wow i need a square that's so awesome oh i need that crowbar um i, I often i often do you know home renovation projects in my home and so i love an excuse it's like oh i gotta go buy a reciprocating saw because i have a job that requires it <laughs> so every time i do a new job i basically get a new tool um, which makes my toolbox bigger and bigger 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 so that i can do better and better better jobs my jobs become easier the more tools i have and that's how trigonometric identities work as well now unfortunately if you have a very obscure tool, like what in the world is an Allen wrench, right? Uh, what's a hex key? They're the same thing. But you know, the, but if you don't know how to use it, then it's not a very useful tool. We need to learn how to use them. And so in this case, we need to learn how to prove these trigonometric identities. And so in that regard, what I'm gonna do for the remainder of this lecture 15 is give us pro tips on proving trigonometric identities. We'll do that in force in the next lecture, of course. And so each of these videos will be one tip at a time. Um, so we can drill in these ideas of how to prove trigonometric identity. So the first tip, um, which you can see here on the screen, when proving a trigonometric identity, always work one side of the equation at a time. That is transform the left-hand side into the right-hand side or translate transform the right-hand side into the left-hand side. We never, ever, 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 one more time, never use operations that involve both sides of the equations at the same time. So before we prove the trigonometric identity, let me show you why we never do operations on both sides of the equation at the same time. Let's prove the following. I have a theorem for you. The theorem is that one equals negative one. Now you might be laughing at me right now. This is a false statement, right? One's not equal to negative one. Well, here's the proof. The proof is one equals negative one. I'm then going to square both sides. In which case one squared is equal to one. And then negative one squared is also equal to negative one. Oh, well, well, negative one or one equals one is definitely a true statement. So since this statement is true, that must imply that the original statement was true. And that's the proof. Th that's not that's a false proof, right? That is that is that is not true. Don't do that, right? But that illustrates a point. This is how many students try to prove trigonometric identities. And the thing is, if this if this is a valid proof technique, then I can prove a false statement that then becomes true. Well, that's not the case. It means the technique is invalid. So any truth we discover using an invalid technique actually doesn't verify the truth of it at all. So we don't work simultaneously with, uh, with both sides of the equations. So what someone would do conversely, like with a situation like this, is like, oh, cosine tangent equals... Cosine tangent equals sine. Well, let's see what we could do there. We could divide both sides by cosine theta, right? Um, the cosines there cancel. Then you get tangent theta equals sine theta co divided by cosine theta. Oh, well, tangent equals sine over cosine. That's the ratio identity. Boom, I'm done. So that they would say that's the trigonometric proof, uh, which that's not a valid proof. That's the same problem about proving one is equal to negative one. Um, Basically, the issue here is it's circular reasoning. Um, if you start using this equation, like if you start working on both sides of the equation simultaneously, you're assuming it's an equation because those techniques are only valid to equations. In which case, if you're if you if you assume it's an equation, you assume it's true, right? Um, in which case, then you're assuming it's true, then to get to a statement that's also true, and then you conclude the truthfulness of the original statement. This is circular reasoning. It's not a valid logical argument. So instead, what we have to do is we have to work with, pick one side. In this case, we're going to pick the left-hand side. So pick the left-hand side, cosine, oh, so that's just cosine theta, tangent theta. And we have to then show that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side by a sequence of identities. So we might say something like, well, what if I change tangent into sine over cosine? So we get cosine times sine theta equals 
cosine, or, or sorry, sine theta over cosine theta. So these equations can be justified. So this first equation is justified by the ratio identity. All right, then the next one is just, well, cosine cancels out with the cosine, and we get that this is equal to sine theta, like so. And what's the justification here? Well, this is just an algebraic simplification. You just simplify the expression by canceling out the cosines. And then you'll notice that sine theta is equal to the right-hand side. And so we've showed that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side as a sequence of equalities. And you can write those equalities horizontally, or you can write them vertically, or a combination of the two. Doesn't matter. But the point is you move from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. You don't work with both sides simultaneously. You just take one step at a time. One step, two step, red step, blue step, things like that. You just do two, you just do one step at a time. The ratio identity was applied. An algebraic simplification was applied. And that showed that the two, the two uh, quantities were in fact equal to each other. It's important. You only work with one side of the one side at a time and move from that side to the other side. So that's trigonometric identity tip number one.